All right. All right. Okay, let us pray. Dear Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord. We pray right now for Pastor Darla that you would infuse her with energy, continue to <laughs> fill up with your spirit, help her to share what you have placed on her heart for the edification of us and everybody that listens, Lord. We pray for continued wisdom, understanding, encouragement, enthusiasm, and energy to follow through on whatever it is you commit us to do. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. 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 Also, let me pin you, and you are you can take it away. All right. Good evening. I hope that you guys have had a wonderful two days so far. We in, we have made midweek, so Amen. we're almost there to the weekend. Woo! So anyway, as you know, for the month of September, we are doing um the fruit of the spirit, and we are coming from the key verse, which is chapter I mean Galatians chapter five. Verses 22 to 23, and it says, But the fruit of the Spirit, the result of his presence within us, is love, unselfish concern for others, joy, and peace, patience, not the ability to wait, but how we act while waiting, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control against such things, there is no law. And that is from the Amplified Version. So, so this week we are going to learn about kindness and goodness. So today we are going to start with the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And the question is, what is kindness? Mm -hmm. And I said, just like a physical fruit needs to grow from time to time, needs to be cultivated, the fruit of the Spirit will not be ripened in, in our lives overnight. As we nurture in our faith, all characteristics of our, of our spiritual fruit will grow as well. And if we take a look at Ephesians chapter 4, verses 32, and this is how true kindness is taught to us. And it says, be kind and helpful to one another, tenderhearted, compassionate, understanding, forgiving one another, um, freely just as God in Christ also forgave you. And then I'm going to go back to the question of Jackie. What is kindness? It begins with caring, being tenderhearted, compassionate. And if you guys can help me with the Greek word, I would appreciate it. I'm just going to spell it out. Okay, I'm, I'm just like, okay. So the Greek word for kind is, uh, is it Chiros? It's C H I E. S T O S. Spell that again. C I C H I E S T O S. E S T O S. Ooh, yeah, that is. <clears throat> um, <laughs> Do they have a say it? They got a way to say it. It's. Trestos? Trestos, maybe? Trestos, maybe. Okay. Yeah. So it means that me that word in the Greek means useful. Mm -hmm. This means that kindness involves action. Truly kind people will actively look for opportunities to show kindness. Like for example, if you in line at Starbucks and somebody's buying coffee. You want to pay it for it, and you tell the uh, and you tell the cashier like, you know what? I'm gonna pay for the individual behind me. And mm -hmm. sometimes when you do that, it's a trickle effect, and then everybody else start doing it. And it, um, then when it comes to um, the, and then it continues. Giving a encouraging word, whether it's through a note, um, or just because gift or someone they may be going through that you're close to, kindness requires action. And I put that in cap uh, capital letters, action. Such, uh, such as words, comfort, courtesy, compliment, can be heartwarming at the kindness and or something as simple as the smile through passion in a store. Sometimes you don't even have to even mumble a word. You can just turn around and just smile at somebody, and you never know just through that smile 
how that might change that person's life that day. Cause you never know what, how they might have woke up that morning. Mm -hmm. And that can be life changing, you know? So that's the, um, so that, those are some kind of examples of being kindness. And who is the perfect example in the Bible who demonstrated kindness was, was Jesus. Amen. Jesus is the ultimate perfect example how he ascended kindness to individuals that were not accepted, to, uh, not treated fairly, the sick, the poor, the outcast, the prostitute, um, the drug dealer, the one that high and strung out. He healed them, prayed with them, and fed them. He didn't make them feel like, oh, you know, yeah, I got a little problem. I'm, I'm all high and mighty. You guys know who I am. I'm, I'm Jesus. You know, I got all this power and authority. So, no, you can't kick it with me. No, he had a heart of compassion. And he uh, hung around them, let them know that they are loved, that they are no different than anybody else. And that's like how we did for the community uh, fest, had to give away. How there was, there was no change. There was no judgment. And when the people came through, they felt that love, that felt, they felt that welcome. So that's how kindness should be portrayed, um, not just one time a year, two times. It, we should practice that every single day, whether it's on our job, whether we're in the marketplace, whether we are you know, on the street, carry a long vacation, whatever it may be. We need to carry that same characteristic um, on a daily basis and live it. So according to Romans chapter 11, verse 22, and I'm reading the metric version. And it says, if God didn't think twice about taking pruning shears to the natural branches, why would he hesitate over you? He wouldn't give a second thought. Make sure you stay alert to the qualities of gentle kindness and ruthless uh, severity that exists side by side in God, ruthless um, with the dead wood, gentle with the uh, graphic shoot, but don't presume on this gentleness. The moment you become dead wood, guess what? Game <laughs> over. <laughs> it's a wrap, <laughs> you know? So we don't want to, we don't want to be dead. We, we don't want to be dead wood people. No, mm -hmm. God had, and after he extended so much grace that we got to learn how to give grace within our kindness as well. Now, sometimes you might not get in return, but that does not mean we have to do, uh, be, be an eye for an eye or a two for a two. So we got to be the bigger person and still extend kindness. Even the one that has slandered our name, um, talked about us, and, you know, all that, and, that, and, that, and, that, and that's and that's and that's hard, you know, that, to, to uh, you know to bite the bullet sometimes and still extend that kindness when you want when you want to like karate chop and punch them folks in the throat, but you like Lord Jesus, I remember you said I gotta be kind. <laughs> so you know, so kindness is a practice. It's a work. So it's not something that we can do overnight. But through time, through time, that's why we have the gift of the Holy Spirit to show us, to groom us, to prune us, and that's why we have to be cultivated just like a fruit. It's a process that we have to go through to learn how to have those, how to have that acting of um kindness. All right. So with that, I challenge. Um, everyone in this room or that's watching this um, study tonight or wherever you are that continue to push kindness, even when it's, even when it's hard, even when your feelings get hurt, uh, you know, when people bite, uh, backbiting and all that type of stuff, just remember that just like God gave us grace, we got to learn how to give them grace and still show kindness. And when people see that, they're like, oh, okay. I see she, 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 she didn't rattle. Her feathers wasn't rattled, you know. She didn't, uh, she, didn't, she didn't clap back or he didn't clap back or whatever. And you still show kindness, okay? So now we are going to come to the second piece of the, um, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And the other piece we're going to talk about is goodness. Goodness and kindness can kind of go in hand, but it's a little different, all right? So, so I put, what is goodness? Goodness is not a quality we can man we can manufacture on our own. Mm -hmm. What exactly 
is goodness. The word good is used as frequently in our everyday lives <clears throat> that it almost, it almost loses its meaning at times. For example, how many times a day do we tell somebody good morning, you know, good afternoon, you know, good work, good job, good luck. But the Bible tells us on uh that but the Bible tells us that the word good means holy, mm. pure, righteousness. Goodness can often be seen by our action. It's still another action word, people. That means we can't give la uh, lip service. We gotta we gotta we gotta uh walk the walk and talk the talk. Okay. But our lives also have to be pure. The goodness of Christ is to be demonstrated in our lives every day. As it says, according to Psalm chapter 23, verse 6, it says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God had to, God had to be filled with goodness, we have to be filled for, with goodness from the inside out. It has to match. We can we can say you look good on the outside. I got all this going on, but sometimes we can be messed up. And also, it's a heart thing as well. So it has to match. <clears throat> being uh being holy in what we do and what we say, because Christians should have a heart that seeks goodness. We are not yet to do the good works because doing good work without a good heart is empty. It means nothing. So we got to practice when we do something good that it comes from the heart. It's inward and it, and it, it matches together. All right. The goodness described as the fruit of the spirit is not merely moral, moral behavior, but an excellent of character. This goodness is only possible through God's grace and mercy. We often say in the church, God is, God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Does this mean that our lives are always good? No. <laughs> it does not mean our lives are always peaches and cream and, you know, uh, you know, like eating a nice crumble cookie that's all nice, sweet and bubbly. No, it's not always like that. <laughs> you know, sometimes we're on, we, we're on the roller coaster ride. That's like, that's like never ending. You're like, oh my God, how am I going to do this thing called life? Because today was jacked up. You know, I wanted to hurt some folks or whatever. So, yeah, so sometimes, you know, it's not always that good. Of course not. It means that God is practicing the fruit, um, the fruit of the spirit of goodness, godliness. God is good, and he wants us to grow in the fruit of goodness so we can live a fulfilling life full of righteousness and love. So we got to learn how to practice goodness. I have a question for you guys. When you hear the word goodness, even in a biblical perspective or life in general, what does that mean to you? What does that look like? How would you demonstrate or how would you show that to someone who would often do and ask, you know what? I have a question. What is, what, what is goodness? I thought goodness was about, you know, if I do good for somebody, you know, that would be my reward and, that, and, that, and that's enough. Now how how will how would you how will we um challenge that person that that that's not that, that that's not the full essence of what goodness means? How would you explain that to somebody? How would you simplify it? That's a good question. Anybody want to take take uh take take it? Like talk to me like I'm five, because I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can, honey. How you doing? Good, how are you? I'm good, girl. So go, don't get that. go ahead and take it away. Okay. Um, so goodness, I uh, think of like the scripture where it talks about uh, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Um, but when I think in terms of goodness of the Lord, I think of like the in spite of, right? 
because we face, like scripture talks about many of the afflictions of the righteous and all that stuff, all the things that seem opposite from good things. This is part of God's character. So in spite of all that's going on, I always think of like, he is still good. So his goodness, I feel like is like the in spite of ness um, of life. Like no matter whatever you go through, um, you know, when the dust has settled finally, or even when there's still a dust cloud all around you, uh, one thing that you can grab a hold of is the goodness of God. It's not good. That is not going to change. Nothing about, um, you know, our situations changes that part of God's character. Um, so yeah, it just makes me think of like the in spite of this kind of, you know, when I think of goodness, his goodness in spite of anything else that may, you know, happen good, good or bad or whatever it can't compare. Amen. Okay. Thank you. And I totally agree. And I love, and I love how you, um, put that and I think somebody put something in the yeah Pastor James chat. wrote um goodness spiritual moral excellence and I Amen. agree 100 percent with what Minister Leslie said because that's spiritual moral excellence in spite of circumstances it's not yes. dependent on circumstances and those types of things amen yeah amen absolutely I totally I totally agree. Are, are there any other tape comments regarding um, goodness? Well, I think when you talked about someone saying, well, I did this or that, so that's enough. Um, the way that I would explain that is, is goodness is not based on you. Mm -hmm. Goodness is what God does through you. So his goodness in you is what goes back to what um, Minister Leslie said, Pastor James said, in that in spite of. So, see, I can say, well, I'm going to do good for you, but it's a motive. Like, I'm doing good mm. for you so that this, that, and the other. But the only way you're able to do the good for even those that are not going to pay you back or those that um, that even might be misusing you is because of what God does in us. He builds his character in us. And helps us to 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 from that spiritual place make a moral judgment to to uh, live and present the excellent work of Christ in our actions, deeds, and and conversations and everything else we do. Okay, I totally agree. And also, it makes me think about those that sometimes they have platforms, basically. Mm -hmm. And you see them doing all these good works and everything like that. But the, the scary part about it at times, when they get to that final that final place and they think they're going to en enter into the kingdom, for the forever kingdom, and the guy be like, I didn't know you. Hmm. You did, you, you said you did this third, did that and the third, but, but where was I in the process? He said, "How was I recognized in this in this so-called goodness you said you did? Because you was all puffed up about you. You know, you expect uh people to uh you know kind of like recognize them or what have you. Or sometimes you have those that have like friends like friends with benefits. Okay, well, if I do this for her, da 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 da." -da I expect something in with time right. type of thing. And people really need to get out of that type of mindset and characteristic of that and realize that's not goodness. That's not what goodness is about. And that's not what goodness is being demonstrated. That is not the type of goodness that uh that God wants us to to do or to be. Goodness has to be, it's I'm gonna go hand in hand with kindness and goodness. Mm -hmm. You know, they um they, they are the foundation, what I say equal to having compassion. You have to have compassion, you have to, and it deals with the heart first. So if your heart is jacked up and it's hard, I'll be like, mm, you better go back and rethink that and look in the mirror real quick <laughs> and, and, and fix that and find out, you know, what's going on. So that God can begin to do the inner work, and then that's when the heart will begin will begin to soften, even with even when you might have been slandered or whatever the case may be. But I thank God for His grace and for His mercy and how He could continue to prune us um, 
in those areas of how to still give out the kindness, not give out, but to have the care with it and walk with kindness and goodness so that when people see us, they don't see the flesh, but they see the Son and the Holy Spirit that live within us and how we walk and how we move and how we talk. So all of that should go, you know, hand in hand. Um, when we're talking about this series, the fruit of the spirit. So I think this is such an awesome uh, teaching. And those are my two cents for today. That was a yeah. pretty much easy teaching, easy lesson, and kind of straightforward. Yeah, because one of the things you think about goodness, um, I think about like even in my dissertation work, it's it's really from an altruistic perspective, meaning mm -hmm. you do it because it's the right thing to do. You do it with no expectation of, of return. Um, yeah. And so your motive is all best based on I'm doing it because it's the right thing to do. Um, yeah. And that's and it's really, pure. right. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's the the thing about goodness. When you're really talking about it from a moral, spiritual perspective of God building his characteristic in us, it is coming from the place of you do it because it's the right thing to do because anything else. And then you're not really met. That's not really coming from that, that, that um spirit. I mean, from that fruit, that's just, you are applying. I would say goodness with a little G um, versus. I like that. I like that. Goodness that is. With the big G. Right. Yeah. Like, that is manifested. Yeah, got you. That is manifested as a spiritual um, attribute being built um built in us and so um so that that is a you know good point anybody else have any other thoughts or comments so i'm gonna ask you you a quick question miss darla yes. so based on like even just your study um of the two what what would be your challenge to somebody that's saying okay i need the lord to to build his goodness in me i need him to build his kindness in me so what would be like your challenge to somebody that came and asked you that particular question oh could i ask that that particular question first you know i would like um i will always try to back it up you know with a scripture just, just to show um for uh for evidence you know like do it do it um like like when they talk like an apologetic uh to, you always have to show you know evidence of that you always back it up with scripture and also i would give them um like example you know how jesus demonstrated um the kindness you know especially about like for those that was being um that was being overlooked mm -hmm. or talked about or whatever and i think um people in general can relate to that because all of us have had that type of um, thing happen to us one way or another. And also just to be transparent, to be honest. And that's your time to really uh, to let your guard down and let them know, hey, I, I hear you, but this is Black J. Skippy, X, Y, G. I'm going to give you the, I'm going to give you the meat, what the word says, and then I'm going to chill with you maybe my personal testimony, whatever that may look like, and then listen to them, you know, just have a, just have a, um, just have a dialogue. So that's how I would express um, if I were to ever encounter that with an individual about kindness and goodness, I make sure that I have my word backed up with Amen. that. And you know, something else I think, I don't know who said it, maybe you said it, and that is just really understanding that both of these are very active words mm -hmm. so um they're followed up with the action they're followed up with the doing of something um and um i think i think you may have mentioned that it does depend also on us having that compassion um, yes so we have that compassion of christ in us uh, it was his compassion that then led him to do these kind works um um, where people needed it, but it wasn't always that they could afford it or that they could pay for it. So I think that's another level when you talk about goodness and kindness. Mm -hmm. You're doing it because it's the right thing to do, and you do it even if people, uh, you do it at a, a personal sacrifice to yourself um, because you always, you know, people may need your kind acts, 
but they may can't afford your kindness. You know what I'm saying? Mm, so, yes. Oh, yeah. I didn't think of that way. Yes, I do. That made that makes a lot of sense. So it's more, it also just is reminding us of, of that. And so even what you said, for example, um, one of the examples I would use is just like we did do the giveaway, right? Yes. You guys had to, the people, we were giving things away. We weren't making them pay for it. But these were things that we willingly sacrificed. These were mm -hmm. things that uh, we took the time to prepare for and get ready um, so that we could show these, these kind acts. And so I think that's the other thing too, that just um, as believers, we, we kind of remind ourselves kind of daily, Lord, what kind act can I do today for someone that maybe can't even afford to ask or they can't afford or they may not believe they can afford um mm. to, to receive for me because sometimes some people feel like even if it's not a cost of money i've heard people say well i don't want to bother you because of your time so even to give yeah, up I your hear that time, yeah right so even the giving up your time is still it's a, a cost it's still it's a, a cost yeah because right? it's costing you your time so yeah um so it's just you know some things i thought you know we kind of could think about um in general did anybody else have any thoughts on that before we um um and thank you for the list did anybody else have any thoughts around how they see kindness and goodness in action <clears throat> all right hearing none um we're going to um, get ready for prayer. Uh, just reminding us, quick couple of quick announcements. Um, okay. Tomorrow, my um, I'm back at ten thirty, so we have the regular ten thirty time for Mountain Movers prayer, and we'll continue the series on the alone time. And um, tomorrow, and that's right on time message too. Woo. And and so. the one tomorrow is the man. Uh, you know, not the man in the mirror, but um, you alone in the mirror. I didn't about to sing a Michael Jackson. <laughs> But it's alone in the mirror, and it's really a good good lesson as well. Mm. Um, also, this Sunday is we're continuing our men's month. So this Sunday we have been um, Pastor Andre Harris is coming to uh, speak for us. So we're thankful for um, for that. So uh, do anybody have any prayer requests? If you do, you can put them in the comment, or you can um, come off mute and let Darla know before she goes into prayer. All right, seeing none, Miss. Okay, uh, prayers for Tamika. Prayer for who? Tamika. Tamika. Yes. Okay. All right. So we're gonna let you take it over, ma'am, and you can lead us in prayer. All right. <clears throat> Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, I just want to say thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to see another day of your goodness and your mercy, Father God. And also just being so faithful and so loving, oh God, that you are not like men, oh God, that you continue to send grace, even in even through our messed up, Lord God. <clears throat> I just want to say thank you just for being our Abba Father, Lord God. And as your song says, nothing else, that's all we desire, nothing else but you, Lord God, just wants you, Father. Nothing else matters but just to be in your presence, just to be in your faith, and just to have that alone time that you can minister to us in those in those in those secret moments, in those secret places that, that, that we sometimes don't reveal, but you know them, Lord God. So continue to um you know, uh, minister to our hearts and our needs and continue to prune us to be, uh, to be a better rep a reputation of who you are when people see us, Father God. Father God, I come to you right now on behalf of Tamika right now, your precious daughter, Father. I'm asking you right now, God, wherever she is, Lord God, that you would touch her from the corner, from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet, Lord God. I'm asking you right now, oh God, that you will heal every cell that's in her body, oh God, that 
that that's not in alignment, that's not in alignment with her body, Father God. I'm asking you right now to begin to heal the brain cells as well, Lord God, so weak though that I believe and I know that you can stop these seizures that she's having, Lord God, more and more frequently, Lord God. I'm asking you right now that you allow her to have rest on top of rest, oh God, because sometimes her mind is so busy about so many different things, Lord God. And let her know that she is loved and that she is not forgotten, oh God, and that your word still is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, Lord God. I thank you right now for the anointing that is on her life, Father God. I ask you right now that you continue to keep her and give her strength in days to come. Right now, in the name of Jesus, God, let her continue to trust to trust in you, to love in you, <clears throat> and just continue to uh to equip her. Even even more, Lord Jesus, I'm asking you right now, even at a continual doctor appointment, oh God, that she will listen to what the doctor asked her to do, asked her to take in order to stop whatever that's going on in her body right now, um, internally, Father God. I'm asking you right now that you begin to, to uh to, to unify things within, within her bloodline right now in the name of Jesus. We come against every generational curse that even that what, what has happened to her, that it won't no longer happen again for um, for generations and generations and generations to come right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. I'm asking you right now, oh God, and, and I believe that it is so and it's already done for Tamika. So I'm asking you right now, Lord God, that you continue to be with us as we get ready to end this wonderful Bible study lesson, oh God, that we continue to demonstrate through actions and even through the words of kindness and goodness for the rest of this week, for days to come and years to come as we interact with people right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Allow us to have sweet rest on tonight. Let us begin to wake up just refresh on tomorrow and wake up with you first on our mind and just to stay Thank you. And I say thank you, Lord God, for just being who you are, Father, and keep continuing to cover us like never before. And we feel this prayer right now in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, everybody, have a good night, and we will talk soon. Bye-bye. All right, have a good one. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.